Здравствуйте! Hello and welcome to Russian language class. Before moving on, let's have a quick recap of the things that we learnt in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we learnt the active participle in the present and past tense. So, let's look at the examples that we have already discussed in the previous lesson. Какая девушка учится в вашей группе? Which girl studies in your group? Девушка, которая читает стихи, учится в нашей группе. The girl who is reading the poems now studies in our group. So, here we are using the word katori in a complex sentence and that is how we can reply to this question. The another way is to use an active participle. Девушка читающая стихи учится в нашей группе. The girl who is reading a poem studies in our group. So, here we are using the present active participle or present participle active. The next is Kakik studenta viv strechali vufiete. Which students did you meet in the at the canteen? Vufiete yav strechal studenta katori priyakhali is Moskvi. So, at the canteen I met the students who came from Moscow. Or we can use a participle since the action which is taking place here is in the past tense, we will use the past participle active. Bufeti of Strechel Studenta Priya Khafshik is Moskvi. At the canteen, I met the students who came from Moscow. Here we are using the active participle in the past tense, and the gender number and case will depend on the noun it qualifies. So, here the noun which it qualifies is studentav which is in the accusative case plural number. So, the form of priyekhafshi will be in the plural number and accusative case. So, this was about the present participle active. So, now we will look at the past participle passive and active participle passive. So, basically we will be discussing passive participle. The topic that we are going to discuss now is the passive participle. So, how do you understand the passive participle? Passive participles are the participles which denote an action in the passive voice. Passive voice you already know. So, the passive participles they denote an action in the passive voice. They are further classified into present participle passive and past participle passive. Present participle passive which denotes an action in the present tense and past participle passive which denotes an action in the past tense. So, let us first discuss the present participle passive. Present participle passive, how do we form the present participle passive from the verbs. And one more important thing here to mention is the passive participles are only derived from the transitive verbs. Transitive verbs you already know, transitive verbs are verbs which require a direct object. So, now let us try to form the present participle passive with the verbs like chitach, Lubit, Paluchat and Vijit. So, how do we form the present participle passive from these verbs? The rule is very simple. The first thing you have to do is you have to take the conjugated form of these verbs in the first person plural number. So, with me, if we conjugate the verb chitach, what do we get? Chitaim. And then you add the ending of an adjective which is ane kratke. So, first take the first person plural number conjugated form and then add the adjectival ending ane kratke and you get the present participle passive. So, chitach chitaimi. The similarly lubich lubim plus ane kratke. Paluchach, paluchaim, which is 
the conjugated form with first person plural number plus e and e krat ke paluchi ai mui vidit vijim e and e krat ke vijimi so this is how we have to form the present participle passive now there are certain verbs with the endings dava stava znava so if you come across the verbs with these endings then the present participle passive will be derived from their infinitive forms so first you'll take the infinitive form drop the ending and you'll add ye mui at the end to get its present participle passive for example davat davat is to give so drop the ending which is the end of sign and add ye mi davai mi similarly pradavach pradavach is to sell drop the ending the end of sign and add ye mi pradavai mi uznavach uznavach is to know to recognize to get to know uznavach uznavai mi stavach stavai mi so this is another rule if you come across any verb with these endings you'll have to follow this rule that we have to derive their present participle passive from their infinitive forms so this is about the formation of present participle passive so now we'll look at the examples where we use present participle passive now we'll look at some of the examples of present participle passive so some sentences where present participle passive has been used so let's start with the question first and then we'll answer using the present participle passive kakie karchini with materially vata muzei so which paintings did you look at in this museum मिस मत्रेलिप से करची नी कतोरी पकाजवेत वेत मुजे सो वी लुक दैट ऑल द पिक्चर्स कतोरी पकाजवेत व्हिच आर बीइंग शोन इन दिस म्यूजियम सो हियर वी आर यूजिंग द वर्ड कतोरी एंड यूज एंड आंसरिंग द क्वेश्चन सो सिंस वी आर यूजिंग अ कॉम्प्लेक्स सेंटेंस वी आर यूजिंग द वर्ड कतोरी in the subordinate clause so now we'll try to answer this question using the present participle passive and how do we do that miss materially se karchi ni pakazi vai me muzei or pakazi vai me vata muzei so we looked at all the pictures which are being shown in the museum as you can see here this action is being denoted in the passive voice and the action is taking place in the present that is why we are using present participle passive now the second question we have is kaki e novasti vislushaiche so which news are you listening to me slushem novasti katoriye peridayut parajiu we are listening to the news which are being broadcast on radio this comes from piridavat piridavat is to telecast or broadcast me slushem novasti piridavai me par radio so here we are using the present participle passive so which are being broadcast so here the action is in the passive voice that is why we are using the present participle passive and the action is taking place in the present that is by present tense the next question we have is kakie machine vam naravetsa so which cars do you like so here again we'll try to answer it with a complex sentence using katori and then using the present participle present participle passive nam nravyatsa machine katoriye prajvodyat viponi so we like the cars 
which are produced in Japan, Yaponia is Japan. So here we are using the verb prajvajit is to produce. So which are being produced in Japan. Again the action is in the passive voice. So we will use passive participle and since it is taking place in the present tense we will use present participle passive. So how do we do that? Nam naravetsa machine prajvajimie viponi. So here from the verb prajvajit we derive or we form the present participle passive prajvajimie, prajvajimie viponi. So now another important point while discussing the passive participle is, so whenever we denote the performer of an action, it has to be in the instrumental case. For example, raskazi katoriya mitchitayam ochin inchiriyesni. As you can see, in the subordinate clause katoriya mitchitayam, mu is the performer of the action which is chitach. So if you change it into present participle passive, then you have to change the performer of the action in the instrumental case. Raskazi chitaimiya nami ochin inchiriyesni. So here as you can see, mi we have changed mi into nami which is the instrumental case. Why? Because mi is the performer of the action and whenever we use a present passive participle, we use the performer of the action in the instrumental case. So this is about the present participle passive. Now we will discuss about the past participle passive. Now we are going to discuss past participle passive. So how do we form the past participle passive and where do we use them? The first thing we will discuss the formation of past participle passive. How do we form them from the verbs? The first thing that I would like to mention here is past participle passive are always formed from the perfective aspect of the verbs. So we will not consider the imperfective aspects. So they are only derived or formed from the perfective aspect of the verbs. The first rule says if the verb ends with either at, at as of sign or yat as of sign then we use the suffix n, n and e and e kratke. So this is how we form the past participle passive. For example, prachitach as you can see it ends with a ten soft sign. There is a verb with the ending a te soft sign. How do we form the passive participle past? We drop the ending which is the and soft sign and add N, N, I, and E kratke. So, prachitanni. Prachitach, prachitanni. Similarly, napisach. Napisach again ends with a, and soft sign. Napisanni. We are doing the same thing. We will drop ten soft sign and add N, N, I, and E kratke. Napisanni. Now, the second rule says if the verbs end with E tes of sign, then we use the suffixes either yenni or yonni. So these are two suffixes which are used with the verbs which end with E tes of sign. For example, pastroich, pastroich is to build, pastroich ends with E tens of sign. So that is why we will use the suffix yenni, pastroenni, pastroenni is the past participle passive from the verb pastroit. Rishit, rishit is the perfective aspect of the verb rishat to decide. Rishyonni, so here we are using yonni. Next is kupit, kupit kuplinni. So here we are using yenni with an additional consonant l. If you remember the conjugation of kupit, Ya kuplu. So with ya we always use this additional consonant l, so which is carried forward in the past participle passive. Next is aswabajit to set free. Aswabash jionni. 
Asvabash Jionni. So here we are using Yonni. Upatribit. Upatribit is the perfective aspect of the verb upatribliat to use. How do we make the past participle passive from this verb? Upatribliyonni. So here again we are using yonni with an additional consonant l in the same way as we have done with kupit. Brosit. Brosit is to throw. Broshinni. Broshinni. So here there is a change, there is an alternation of consonant. The s has changed to sh. Why? Because again with ya, when we conjugate brasich with first person singular number, we do the same alternation of consonant. So, which is carried forward in the past participle passive. Now, again there are verbs with the ending s te e or s te soft sign or z te e or z te soft sign. So, whenever we come across any words with these endings, then we use the suffix yoni plus they are the past participle passive, they are formed from their conjugated form. So, first you have to conjugate them in the first person singular number and then you have to form the past participle passive. So, how do we do that? Let us look at some of the examples. Prinisti, prinisti is to bring. Ya Prinisu. So, here you have to conjugate the verb with the first person singular number and then just drop the ending u and add yonni. Prinis yonni. So, this is the past participle passive which has been formed from the verb with the ending s than e. The second example we have is previsti. Previsti ya previdu. Again, you have to drop the ending u and add yonni, privij yonni. The next is pirivisti. Pirivisti is to translate. Ya pirividu, pirivij yonni. So, this is how we form the past participle passive. So, apart from these two rules, there is one more rule also which we will discuss now. We are discussing about the past participle passive, their formation. We have already discussed about two rules, now we will discuss the third rule. So, to form the past participle passive, if we come across a verb with the ending jet, the yet as of sign or nyat and ya the and so of sign and the verbs with the conjugation similar to Peet, buit, muit, or piet. We have already done their conjugations. So, if we come across any verb with the conjugation similar to either peet, buit, muit, or piet, then we will form the past participle passive by adding the suffix te, i, and e kratke. For example, we peat, we peat is to drink. So, how do you form the past participle passive from this verb? We peati. So, what we are doing is we are removing the ending te and so of sign and adding te, i and e kratke. The second verb we have is zakrit, zakrit is to close. Zakriti, zakriti. The next verb we have is najet. Najet is to put on. Najeti. Najet, najeti. Panyat, to understand. Poniti. So, this is the past participle passive. In addition to these verbs, there are some verbs like nachat, abmanut, and avziat. They also take the ending te, i, and e kratke. So, nachach, nachati, abmanuch, abmanuti, and zyach, zyati. So, these are 
the rules of formation of past participle passive. So, now we will discuss their use in the sentences. So, we will look at some of the examples where past participle passive have been used. Now, let us look at some of the examples of past participle passive. So, how do we use past participle passive in sentences? For this again I have written a question with kakaya. Kakaya kniga van naravitsa. So, which book do you like? Munya naravitsa kniga katoru yu napisal etat after. So, here we are using a complex sentence with katori. Munya naravitsa kniga katoru yu napisal etat after. So, I like the book which was written by this author. The same sentence as you can see this is in the passive voice. The same sentence how will we change them using the past participle passive. Munya naravitsa kniga napisa naya etim afteram. So, I like the book which was written by this author. So, here as you can see napisa naya is the past participle passive and the form of napisa naya depends on the form of the noun kniga. Since it is a singular number nominative case and feminine gender the same gender number and case will be followed in the past participle passive that is why napi sanaya is singular and then nominative case and feminine gender. Next is akakui knige skazalvam pripadavacha. So, about which book your teacher told you. So, which book your teacher told you about? Pripadavachal skazal nama knige katoryu napisal etat after. The teacher told us about the book which was written by this author. So, again the subordinate clause is in the passive voice. So, how do we convert the passive voice using past participle passive? Prapadavachal skazal nama knige napisannai etim afteram. Two things are there. First thing that the performer of the action here has to be in the form of instrumental case that is why etat after has been changed to etim afteram. And the form of napisannai will depend on the form of the noun which it qualifies. So, as you can see here it qualifies the noun knige which is in the prepositional case. So, that is why napisannai will also be in the prepositional case singular number and feminine gender. So, the corresponding form of napisannai is napisannai. The next example is kakiye karchini vijalif muse. So, which pictures did you see at the museum? Muse me vijali karchini katoriye sasdali is vesniye khudoshniki. So, at the museum we saw the pictures which were made by the famous painters. So, here we are using the verb sasdach. Muzei mi vijali karchini sosdaniye is vesnami khudoshnikami. Similar to the second example, here also we are using the performer of the action and since it is the performer of the action that will be kept in the form of instrumental case. So, is vesniye khudoshniki is vesnimi khudoshnikami and sosdaniye will correspond to the form of karchini because sosdaniye qualifies the noun karchini. And karchini is then the accusative case, plural number. So, that is why sosdanya will also be in the accusative case, plural number. So, this was some of the examples where we saw the use of past participle passive in Russian. So, like we have also discussed that there are some active participles which are used as nouns. Similarly, there are some passive pars participles too which are used as nouns for example ranini daniye and uchonye ranini is a wounded man 
Danya is data and Uchione is scientist. So, these are few of the nouns which are basically past participle passive, but now they are being used as nouns. So, this was all about past participle passive. Now, we will move on to the next topic. Now, I will read out a text and in the text there are participles which have been used and which we have studied just now. So, please pay attention to the use of participles and listen to the text carefully. So, the text contains three paragraphs. So, I will read out the Russian version first, first paragraph and then I will tell you the meaning and then I will read out the second paragraph and the meaning and the third paragraph and the meaning. So, please listen to me carefully. Alexei Alexandrovich Bakhrushin bil ujibi chilnim kalitsyaneram sazdavshim ezinstvinni vrasi chitralni muzei i chilavekam astavivshim agromni sled vruske kulture. So, I will repeat the line again. Alexei Alexandrovich Bakhrushin bil ujibi chilnim kalitsyaneram sazdavshim ezinstvinni vrasi chitralni muzei i chilavekam astavivshim agromni sled vruske kulture. Achets Bakhrushina Vlajevshi Balshi Maskovskim Zavodam Privuchil Sinak Tamush to Djengi Jela Seriosne Itrachets Ek Nushna Sumam Achets Imevshi Milionne Satsayanye Derjal Sina Vizhovich Rukavitsach Elishnik Djeneg Nidaval Achets Imevshi Milionne Satsayanye Derjal Sina Vizhovich Rukavitsach Elishnik Djeneg Nidaval so, now I will tell you the meaning of this paragraph. Alexei Alexandrovich Bakhrushin was an amazing collector who built the only museum of theatre in Russia and he was the man who left a huge trace in the Russian culture. Bakhrushin's father who owned a big factory in Moscow trained his son to the fact that money is a serious thing and one must use his mind in order to spend that. The father despite having millions in wealth held his son with an iron rod and did not give him any extra money. The second paragraph goes like this. Muzei namu sabira chasvu bakhrushin sigda incheresa vafshesya chiyataram prishol slu chayna. Nos jail of vibar on asta valsya vernim imu siul shizn. Inikakik jenig ni jaliel yesli nushna bila kupich tota is a story chiyatara. Sobranna im kalyaksya unikalna. Vnei i pismo ruskih dramaturgov i portreti aktiorov i recenzi napisanje krupnejšimi ruskimi kritikami i rysunki s djelanje izvesnimi četralnimi hudošnikami. Now I will tell you the meaning of this paragraph. Though he was always interested in theatre, he got into museum of collection by chance. However, after he made his choice, he remained loyal to it the whole life. And he did not mind spending money if something was to be bought from the history of theatre. The collection gathered by him is unique. In this collection, there are letters of Russian playwrights, the portraits of actors, reviews written by the great Russian critics and figures drawn by the famous theatre painters. The third paragraph is Sivodnya Lyuji. Prikhadyashe vunikalni muzei gavaryat spasiva ivo asnavachilyu. Priyat krevshimu im dver vujivichilni mir istori chiyatara. I will repeat the paragraph once again. Isivod nalyuji prikhadyashe vunikalni muzei gavaryat spasiva ivo asnavachilyu. Priyat krevshimu im dver vujivichilni mir istori chiyatara. And today people coming to the unique museum say thanks to its founder who opened to them the door of the amazing world of history of theatre. So, this is the end of the text. So, with this text, I conclude this lesson here. So, we will meet in the next class. Till then, spasiba, dasvidanya.